Hey teammates, welcome to this free training, the five progressions of learning a skill. And in this training, we're gonna learn how to maximize your player's skill development by redefining how players learn. Uh, my name is Coach Hart, I'm the creator of Building Better Baseball, which is a YouTube channel and online course creator. And I teach youth baseball players and coaches how to play and coach baseball. And I can't wait to dive into this training with you, so let's get started. So what you're gonna to learn today, this is a simple framework for how players learn a new skill. So every teacher of the game, whether you be a coach, whether you're a parent, whoever you are, if you're teaching the game of baseball, there is a certain way that players learn a new skill. And sometimes we don't think about how the players learn. We just think about the way that we wanna teach it that works for us. But if we flip it and we cater our teaching to the way that players learn, that is a way to seriously maximize your player's skill development and that's what we're going to go over in this training. We're going to learn how to organize your practices and drills to fit this framework, like I just said. So if you cater to how your players learn and you formulate your practices or your drills to how players learn in this framework, you're going to get so much more production and understanding of the new skill than you would if you just did it sporadically and not in this framework. And this is just a new way to think about teaching baseball. So. A lot of people have their own ways maybe that they learned when they were younger of how to teach the game. And there's a certain framework and progression that I've found that players learn a new skill. And if you do these progressions one through five and you formulate your practices and drills to fit this framework, you're gonna get such great feedback and such great production out of your players. So the first progression is what I call the big idea. And this is where you introduce the entire skill. So for this whole training, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the example of hitting. So this is where you would introduce the entire skill of hitting from start to finish. The most important thing is that you don't want to have more than three big cues to complete the skill. And for example, hitting, all you would have and all you would teach in the beginning is the setup, the load, and the swing. That's it. You don't want any more than three cues. And this is stemming from my PE teaching career where I have found that no more than three cues. Anything more than three cues creates overwhelm and three cues is the big idea and that's a perfect starting point for every player to understand how the skill is supposed to work. And this helps players understand the big picture without creating overwhelm and confusion. If you think about creating a puzzle, right? If you open up the puzzle box and you have all the pieces laid around, you have to see the, what the puzzle looks like before you start doing the puzzle, right? This is exactly what this is. The big idea is looking at the puzzle, seeing what it's supposed to do, and then you start piecing together, right? So you're introducing the entire skill, the big idea, this is the entire skill of what it's supposed to look like. Like. And like I said, no more than three cues to complete the skill. And the whole point is to keep it simple. The big idea when you first start out, you want to keep everything simple for the players to not create overwhelm and confusion. Number two is what I call break it down. All right. Now, this is building on the foundation of the big idea with the details. These are the minute details and we're breaking everything down. If you think about those three cues, you have one here, one here, one here. You're going to break each one down into three or four different cues of themselves. Right. So this is where we get into the details of the skill. So we're going to focus on the smaller mechanics and the movements of the skill. And this helps them understand how each part of the body contributes to performing the skill. So they have the big idea, they've seen the entire puzzle and what it's supposed to look like. Now we are breaking it down and we're breaking up the body and we're introducing how each part contributes to the entire skill. So in the big idea, all we did for hitting was set up, load, and swing. For the break it down, this is where you're gonna do all the drills of the one-handed drills and the one knee drills and the top half and the lower half. And and this is where we get into the smaller details and the mechanics. And this is a great next step because they already have that foundation of the big idea and how it's supposed to look. Now we're just breaking it down for them and making it easier to understand and build off of that foundation. Number three is reps, reps, reps. And now that they've learned everything about how the skill works, this is time to practice. They have the foundation, they have all the little tiny mechanics and the little tiny details of how the entire thing is supposed to work. 
And this is the time to bring out all of the drills, large and small. Like literally any drill that you can think of, this is where you do it, progression number three. Because they already have the foundation and they already have the small details, we just need to practice, 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 practice. Create that muscle memory to make that skill second nature to the kid. And honestly, a lot of people start here without building the foundation first. Whenever they're trying to teach a skill, they immediately go to the smaller detail drills of the one hand or all the examples that I've said. They start there, but the player doesn't have the foundation of what the skill is supposed to look like, so they don't really understand how that drill is helping them. The drill only helps the players if they understand the big picture of how it's supposed to help, right? And that's one mistake that I see a lot of coaches and parents make is they start with these smaller drills of hitting off the tee and doing all these things, but there's no foundation. There's no, there's no big idea. There's no big picture, right? We have to get the big picture first, the big idea, and then we have to break it down to understand the mechanics. And then once we have those two things in place, the number three progression is reps, reps, reps. So we can get that muscle memory going and instill the proper skill development for your player to be successful. Number four is show your stuff. And they've already built a foundation of understanding and they've practiced all of the drills. So they already have one through three. Now it's time to show out on the field, right? And this includes team practice time, like batting practice and scrimmages, both inner squad and versus other teams. And the reason I have this at number four is basically you've already been hitting off the tee and doing drills and doing drills. Now it's time to see what it looks like on the actual field without having the pressure of the game, right? So you, when you're doing BP, you can see where the progressions one through three that you did all the work on the side and you can see how it translates, all the work that you did in one through three. Now you can see how it translates to the field. And like I said before, you don't have the pressure of the game. And before we get into the last one, there's no real limit on how long or short this process this process can take this process can be in one practice one two hour practice if you start at number one and then go to number two number three and then by the end of practice you're doing batting practice right you could do that all in one practice you could do that over the course of a week over the course of the month a season however long you want it to take there's no limit to how short or long this can take and you can repeat it, right? If you want to do one practice, one through four, and then the next practice, one through four, you could do that too. So number five is perform. And it's time to bring everything they've learned to the game. And the reason that this is different than batting practice or scrimmages is because there's no room for error compared to a practice or a scrimmage. Obviously, we make errors in baseball, right? But it's a game. If you make an error, there's a consequence. In a scrimmage or a practice, there's not. You can learn from it, right? So that brings me to the pressure of the moment is added on. So in number five, the pressure makes everything in performing a skill and skill development so much different and a lot harder than if there's no room for error and there's no pressure in the moment. You go out to the game and you get in that batter's box, that moment is different because the pressure of the game is added on top of everything else. And afterwards, you just rinse and repeat. So kind of like what I said before, there's no limit on how short or long this process can take. You could do two practices a week and then a game on Saturday. So you could do one through four on first practice, one through four on second practice, number five, game. Rinse and repeat for the next week, right? So these progressions can always be reused, rinsed, and repeated. And just a little summary, the five progressions. So we have the big idea where we're introducing the whole entire skill and we have no more than three cues to perform the skill. Uh, number two, break it down. This is where we're going to introduce the details and the little mechanics of every part of the body and to help them understand how the whole entire body works to perform the skill. We have the reps, reps, reps. This is where we've already built the foundation and we just want to practice, practice all of the drills. And we have show your stuff, basically getting into the entire field and seeing how the skill development of one through three translates to the actual field. And then number five, we have the perform. So we have the games, right? We have the pressure of the game, the pressure of the moment added on to the skill development.
And these progressions, it's just a great way to maximize skill development when you teach any skill. So whenever you teach any skill, whether it be hitting, fielding, pitching, anything, right? If you go through these five progressions, this will really help instill and make the learning of the skill concrete for every player. It prevents overwhelm and it prevents confusion because they're kind of building blocks, right? They're kind of, they're kind of starting out, okay, this is the big picture. This is how you break it down. Okay, let me practice. Let me bring it out to a practice on the field for a batting practice or something like that. And then let me perform it in the game. So if this is completely new to you and you found this valuable, hopefully you can use this mindset and this framework to formulate your drills and your practices the next time you go out to practice with your players. And the last thing before we go is I have a lot of free guides on my website that helps in all areas of baseball. So if you found this valuable and you're looking for more, like I said, I have free guides that are available for download on my website. You can go to buildingbetterbaseball.com. Um, my most popular one is a free two hour practice plan for youth coaches. And it's basically a two hour practice blueprint that you can use to kind of fill in and plug what you want to do in your blueprint. If you go to my website, there's about eight free guides that you can have for free for download. Um, and feel free to grab those at any time that you want to take your game even further. I hope that you found this training valuable. I hope this helped you rethink the way that you teach skills. And I really hope that it translates well for your players and you get maximum value and maximize your skill development from your players. So I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Remember, I'm Coach Hart. This is Building Better Baseball. I hope to see you again. And until then, I'll see you next time.